Hi, welcome in. This is Cindy Goodell with Cindy Goodell Photography. And today we're going to talk about packing for a photography workshop to an African safari. So the first tip I have for you is to go ahead and label all your gear. It makes it so much easier if things are labeled. So when something gets lost in the safari vehicle, the guide knows who to return it to, and you don't have any arguments with your roommate over whose battery is in the charger. That's my first tip. Secondly, the most important thing to think about is we have 77 pounds of weight. Normal charter flights in Africa allow you 36 pounds. We have purchased extra seats, so each of us gets 77 pounds. That includes your carry-on, which in my case is going to be the Pelican 1535 Air. That includes your duffel bag, which will be checked. And that includes your personal item, whether you bring a small backpack or a Gura gear bag. And we'll talk about that a little more later. So we have to keep that in mind with our packing, with our decision, 77 pounds. Okay, before I go further, I would like to clear up any confusion regarding tripods. In the past, I was known as a tripod queen, and I insisted everyone use one at all times. Well, things have changed. First off, we have better cameras with internal stabilization. We have lighter lenses with stabilization. And we are going to be in a vehicle. So if you are competent of hand holding your longest lens without a tripod, you do not need to bring one and I will not give you grief. If however, you have a lens that you're not strong enough to hand hold competently, then go ahead and bring a tripod. And the way I'm gonna work it is if I'm in the front seat, I'm gonna have my Wimberly on this bean bag. This will go on the door. My 600 can go here and I can shoot with that. I'll have a 1 to 500 on a camera body over my neck and I'll hand hold that. If I'm in a back seat and I bring a tripod and want to shoot with my 600, what we do is we bungee cord the tripod at the right height to the bars of the seats and we can use a tripod in the vehicle. So if you want to shoot with a tripod, bring it, bring two bungee cords, and sometimes it's very helpful to have a locking carabiner. If you're comfortable shooting without a tripod, no need to bring one, okay? Hope that cleared that up. Now, let's go ahead and pack our photo gear because that's the most important. So, I have a Pelican case here like we talked about. It has the Trex dividers, which I have um, organized, reorganized and I have it so it can fit almost all this gear, which is pretty amazing. Well, first thing, I'm not bringing the ball head because I'm gonna hand hold those lenses that I would use a ball head for. Secondly, since I'm gonna hand hold my one to 500, I'm not bringing the tripod foot. That's bulky and it weighs something. I'm not gonna bring my 70 to 200. It's redundant. I have a one to five, 24 to 105, and a 600, I can go without this one for this trip. That saves some more weight. And I even took off an L bracket. It saves room and it saves a little bit more weight. So I think I'm all set here to start packing. Okay, 24 to 105, tucks right in here. I'm gonna bring two camera bodies. It's always a good idea to bring two if you have a problem with one. You have a backup and also I'm gonna leave two lenses attached so I can always be shooting. So these camera bodies tuck right in there. 100 to 500, the workhorse on Safari. If you have a 100 to 400, just as good. It's gonna be your main use lens. My 600. The lens hood is the only thing that won't fit in here, but it will fit very nicely in my duffel bag with clothes stuffed in the middle of it, or even this can probably be in it. And we're going to pop that in. And I'm making sure, yep, that's going to close great. So next, batteries. Remember, no lithium batteries and check baggage. They all have to be on carry-on. Tuck that there. I am going to bring two tele converters for my 600 for birds. You all know I love my birds. So I'm going to tuck those in here. And it's a good idea to bring raincoats for your lenses, just in case. 
That actually adds us some nice padding. Cloth for wiping stuff down. I always like to bring an extra lens cap. They're easy to lose. And of course, a card wallet. And I usually use, put some tools in there and an extra screw or two. We can tuck this in there too. And the rest of this is not gonna fit. So I like a camera strap for my one to five to be over my chest. A flashlight or a headlamp is really handy for when you're walking from the main lodge or the safari vehicles back to your villa. And if it's dark, you don't wanna walk into an elephant. Here's my bungee cords and locking carabiners. So I'm just gonna have some <clears throat> little extra odds and ends here that I will pack along with this. I almost forgot one thing. I do like a battery grip. It gives you two batteries and it also gives you vertical camera controls, which I find very helpful. So I am going to go ahead and pack this in here. There we go. We have a full boat here. And now we're gonna go ahead and weigh it so we know how what we have to work with. 28.3. Okay, so we'll set this here and <clears throat> we'll just call it 28 pounds to to begin with. So I'm gonna pull out my checklist and we have bean bag with buckwheat check, tripod check, power strips. No, we don't have that yet. We have our lenses, our cameras, our bungee cords, our flashlight. So what needs to go in our duffel bag? Well, we wanna put our tripod in. We wanna put this in. Here's our odds and ends. Lens hood, our Wimberly. And remember for your duffel bag, it cannot have hard sides. It cannot have wheels. These are gonna get stuffed in the belly of the plane. The carry-on can have wheels, can be hard-sided because it's going to either go behind the seats or in smaller compartments where they all line up. Pop my tripod in. I've put my bean bag, my lens hood, the odds and ends bungee cord, my tripod, my Wimberly, cosmetics, and you do need a power strip or a power cube for charging your batteries, keeping your computer charged, your iPhone and stuff like that. What I like to do is this little cube um, because chargers are big and if you have a strip, you can't put one every one. This also has USB and USC. So I like to bring a, two of these and this will plug into the outlet and this gives me a nice cube for charging and then I also have another one for by the bed, which gives me two outlets for charging my phone and watch. And you can get these at Amazon. Tuck that in. The other thing is it's really handy to bring some different size Ziploc bags with a permanent marker. You won't believe how many times you can use these and how helpful they are. You want to bring a Tilly hat because that's what they wear in Africa. A ball cap, go chargers, binoculars. Then I always bring two card readers because they do break. Um, I know we'll be with a group of eight, which probably will have someone that could loan you one if they break. But when we don't get back from our evening drive till nine at night, we're not done with dinner till after 10. It's hard to borrow card readers when people are using them and tired. So I bring two card readers. I bring some lens cleaner and wipes. I also have my temporary hard drives in here where we back up our photos. And I'm just gonna bring one lightweight charger and two R5 charging cables that I can plug into my laptop brick or I also have an anchor brick and I can charge directly in the camera without taking the batteries out. So, this is all my chargers and card readers and temp files in here. And this is a luxury. I really like, ha I know I love having a book in the evening to go look at birds that we saw that day, but it does weigh a lot. So I always wait to see if I have enough room for it. Otherwise, I do have a good app on my phone. It's the same thing as Sazzle's Birds. And you can also keep track of every bird you see each day with a quick checklist on the app, which is great. Because you get home three weeks later and you're keywording those birds and you can't remember what they are because they're from a whole different continent. And yet you can go to your list of every bird you had on that day and you know the day you're looking at because the camera records that. And now your list goes from guessing up one in a thousand birds to one in 50 birds. Makes it a lot easier. So I would download the Sassel's 
Southern Africa Bird app. The other app I really like for international travel is Time Shifter. What you do with that is you enter in your flight info about a week before you leave, and it starts telling you what time to go to bed, what time to wake up, when to have caffeine, when to have light, when to have sunglasses, and actually, if you follow it, you do not have jet lag because it gets you completely switched over by the time you get there. So I can highly recommend that app. And now I'm going to spare you from loading clothes in here because you're all capable of that. And the clothes list is pretty detailed. What I will say, you don't need five shirts. You can do laundry every day at camp. You leave it on the bed. When you come back in the evening, it's there folded, ironed, beautiful. When you come back from dinner, your bed is turned down, beautiful. When you wake up in the morning, there's a hot breakfast and coffee. It is so terrible when we come back home and we have to make our own coffee, do our own laundry, and turn down our own bed. But that said, you don't have to bring a lot of clothes. Just follow this list and realize you can put out laundry every day. Um, so let's see how much I weigh right now with this. Then we're going to do the personal item, and then we'll see how much room I have for clothes. And I might even go with a smaller duffel bag if it looks like I'm going to have more room. But you might want to leave room for gifts if you're bringing back souvenirs and stuff. So that weighed 20 and a half pounds. So I was 28 and 20 and a half is 48. So I have plenty of room for clothes. So I'm at 48. My, I have almost 30 pounds left. So I am sitting really pretty with this. So now for your personal item. Okay. So two years ago when I first did a video for packing for Africa, this was my personal item. It must be able to fit under the seat. And as you can see, it fits right here, which makes traveling very easy. And then what I would do is for getting to the safari vehicle, I had a photo backpack that I packed in my duffel. Well, I don't need a full-on bulky photo backpack just to walk to a vehicle. I need it when I'm hiking in Yellowstone or going in snow coaches and snowshoeing. So what I've done instead now, this is my personal item and um, it also serves as what I put my lenses and my gear in to go out on the game drives because my 600 I'm just carrying. So and if you can see this also fits on here. So this is doing two things as one. So this is going to be my um, personal item from now on. And what's going to go in here is pretty much stuff for the airplane and stuff that didn't fit, fit into my Pelican. So laptop, charging cords, earphones, remember meds? You can't, you don't want to check your meds. What if the luggage gets lost? So you always want to carry your meds on board with you. I like to carry my Lightroom main with me so I can work in Lightroom. Sleep mask. Don't forget your passport. Here's where maybe I'll carry my bird book and I can study up on birds while I'm there. My tile to find it. One thing that's handy is I like using this for my iPhone. So this hooks under between the back of your phone and the case. This hooks on. This hooks to your belt. When you're bouncing around the vehicle or you set stuff down quick to pick up your camera, you can always find your phone. I find this very helpful. Another good tip is exchange a copy of your travel insurance and your passport and emergency contact with your roommate. So if anything happens, somebody has the info right away. This is Lori's. I'll be bringing it again this year. And another tip is these long 16 hour flights are not good on your legs and for blood clots. So talk to your doctor, see if he wants you to take a baby aspirin a couple days before we go and a few days afterwards. Think about wearing compression socks. And the other thing is once we even get to Africa, we're not that active. We could be sitting in game vehicles with our knees down for hours twice a day. So I would consider talking about baby aspirin and compression socks. The other things that are on these lists are don't forget to bring 
Um, a Z pack, which is an antibiotic in case you get traveler's diarrhea, heaven forbid. You should bring a modium at least 12 tablets. It doesn't happen very often, but once in a while someone gets an upset stomach and that works really great. And that's about it. So let's see what, how much weight we're up to. This might weigh 15 pounds, eight pounds. So 48, I'm up to 56. So I have quite a bit of room for clothing, sunscreen, head nets, the rest of the stuff that's on your list. I would bring a light rain jacket. If you have room and the weight to bring rain pants, go ahead and bring them. But that means you need to bring them with you on the vehicle in the bag you carry out. If you're gonna just leave them back at camp, you might as well not fly with them. And they do generally have big ponchos on the safari vehicles. The other thing is if you're close on weight, you could tuck a vest into your carry-on or your personal item. And if we have one commercial flight from Tambo, Johannesburg to Mount Botswana, and they say that the carry-on items can only be 17 pounds. Now in four years, they've never enforced that. But in case they do, I would be fine with this because it was eight pounds. This would be too heavy, but they will gate check something with um, photography gear. So you would go ahead and get in on the plane. She would gate check this. This is another reason to have this hard case. So if they do have to gate check, and I am gonna have locks on this, or you could do strip ties. And if you were approaching the weight limits and wanted to say bring your 70 to 200, as long as you weigh under 220 pounds, you can stuff stuff in a vest and walk on like this and bring all the weight you want. Okay, if you're over 220 pounds, you need to contact me and um, we just need to let, let the light charter flights know. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment me. Don't forget to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the like button. That'd be awesome. Thanks. See you in Africa.